Hi, my name is Machine Ed, and I just wanted to show a method that you guys can do to break through plateaus in Kovacs. The Kovacs Scenario Editor is such an amazing tool. I think people rarely utilize it. So I'm going to show you one example how you can train yourself to be better at pretty much any scenario and uh, probably improve your aim. So I'll be using uh, Close Fast Strafes as, uh, as an example. So first what you want to do is you want to go and download it right here. Um, I've already done that, so it doesn't show the arrow for me. Then you go to your local files and find it. And then you're going to want to go to edit. Um, then you're going to want to unpack the scenario because nobody knows what that means. So first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make the target smaller. So you go to bounding boxes and um, this radius number is going to make them smaller. Usually I would say about 20% smaller is where you want to go, but I would do about um, 40 out of the 58. The reason we're going to do this is because it's going to force your aim to be a bit more strict. Um, rather than just aiming at the bare minimum that you need to. And I also notice it's a bit of a confidence booster. When you get back to the bigger target, it just feels so much easier after you've been aiming at a smaller target. And uh, by the way, if you're doing a scenario that has more than one um, character, um, if you go over here to the session manager, it shows um, which team has which character. So that, that can be helpful. You can see that there's a player and a bot team, and you're going to want to edit the bot. Okay, next we're going to change the time scale. So basically what this does is it either increases the speed or decreases the speed of the map. So like if you have this below one, you're basically playing the map in slow motion. What I like to do is I like to decrease this by 0.1. So it was at um, one before, so I'm going to go and decrease it to um, 0.9. And we're going to save this as because we don't want to overwrite our original map. Um, just give it some sort of memorable name. And then we're going to find it. There it is. We're going to play this and you're going to basically try and get the score that you're aiming for, whether it's to beat your own high score or if you have like a top 100 score in mind that you can see on the leaderboards that you want to get um, into. Whatever it is, try and get that score. And if you can't get it in the first couple of tries, go back and edit it. And then you're just going to want to bump this down another one and then try it again and see if you can get that score that you're aiming for and then basically just kind of rinse and repeat this process until you can get that score. Now once you do reach that score, um, you're going to go back here and we're going to try and increase this slowly. So rather than doing um, 0.1, we're going to start increasing it by 0.01. Basically in very slow increments, we're going to try and train ourselves to get past that um, plateau or that barrier that's blocking us. So why does this work? Playing a scenario on a slower time scale will unload the working memory of all its tasks and pretty much rely only on the procedural or implicit memory. Having your working memory free allows it to fully focus on um, self-correction instead of if you're playing a task that might be too hard. Um, you would have to use both the working memory and the procedural memory to fully focus on it and you would not be able to self-correct yourself. You'd kind of just be in that struggling state and this can form bad habits. If a scenario is too easy, it's possible that your working memory may be able to perform the task all on its own meaning that you would have no procedural stimulation at all. So this would pretty much be useless because the task would just be way too easy. Ideally, you want to stay at the perfect difficulty threshold. That's all I wanted to show today. Thanks.